Welcome to today's session of uh, Scene Layers and uh, Developers. My name is Yvonne Zeller. I'm the product owner of the Scene Layers team. The Scene Layers team is a cross-functional team. Uh, we are working on aspects like the server, um, the, the cooking of Scene Layers, as well as Arcturus Pro as, as a client. Uh, I'm working for uh, S3 Inc. now for a little bit more than uh, 10 years before I came from the uh, German distributor. Um, already as a student, I loved 3D visualization, and now being part of the Scene Layers team is great because I can make my contribution to uh, 3D GIS. Um, with me here is uh, uh, Jill Foster, that's the newest member of our team, uh, pushing for uh, I3S uh, specification uh, tooling as well as uh, the SDK because we know how important it is uh, for our customers as well, of course, for you that you are able to uh, build on top of uh, applications like Axios Pro, for example. Scene layers uh, allow our users to author and visualize large volumes of 3D content to combine this 3D content with other types in visualization, analysis, and across the platform. Scenes containing scene layers can be displayed and explored with high performance by ArcGIS clients. Partners, data providers can create scene layers with ArcGIS software or with their own tools. Scene layers can be shared as scene layer packages, SLPKs, or as web scene layers. This is not just a, a vision statement that we use at conferences like this. We are also using this internally because for every new layer type that we are working on, uh, we really want to make sure that you know, we always design it with this vision in mind. When it comes to the scene layer life cycle, there are basically four main areas uh, that we take care of. One is the authoring of uh, scene layers, be it that you have created a scene in ArcGIS Pro, or you have uh, done it so in uh, City Engine, or you have a third party vendor like Riken, for example, that gives you integrated mesh scene layers. From here, you can actually publish them as uh, web scenes uh, within a web scene as a web scene layer, or you create an SLPK and upload it. Also here, Actius Pro, of course, has a rich uh, sharing uh, experience that you can use to create uh, web scenes and web scene layers. You can also create scene layers using Arcgis Online directly, or as I said, you can upload SLPKs. Um, the consuming clients uh, for scene layers right now is, of course, ArcGIS Pro, what we will mainly uh, present today. I'm sure you had a chance to also look for JavaScript API or runtime and what they are providing for scene layers. Uh, ArcGIS Earth is a client that uh, uses it as well. And the last part that we are um, supporting for feature-based scene layers like points or 3D objects is the maintenance of uh, this kind of uh, scene layers. Uh, it, the editing client that we are currently supporting is ArcGIS Pro, and I will get into each and every of these uh, areas in more details. So how do I actually author a scene layer? Well, there are the different types of scene layers that we are supporting. For example, point cloud. For point cloud, you can take a less data set layer that you have in ArcGIS Pro, for example, to create a scene layer package. Or you can actually use LiDAR data directly uh, using LAS, LAS Z and Z LAS as the input formats. Um, what is new for 2.4 and what we have just tested is uh, the 30, uh, 32-bit support to create very large uh, point cloud scene layers. So we are really talking in, in, in terabytes um, of data that can be shared as point clouds. Integrated mesh mostly come from third-party vendors like uh, Pix4D or Context Capture, for example. But we also have a tool, uh, Create uh, Integrated Mesh, where you can use OSGB as an input type to create an integrated mesh. We have uh, 
two feature-based scene layer types that we are currently supporting, point and 3D objects. You can create them from a point feature layer or a multi-patch feature layer. And the last scene layer type that we added in 2.3 is the building scene layer. A building scene layer is uh, created from a building layer. Um, usually it's Revit as a data source. And you can create an SLPK and upload it or share it directly in the web scene. And you get a building scene layer from it. When it comes to publishing, as I've already mentioned, um, there are basically three main options how you can publish and share your scene layer. One is within a web scene. Basically, you have already in Actios Pro, for example, created a, a scene that has layer types that would be published out as scene layers. Like, for example, you have a multi-patch feature class. Um, you can always share this by value. So the data is copied over to um, Enterprise or Arches Online when you create a feature-based scene layer with an associated feature layer. And with this associated feature layer came, come additional capabilities for you. So you can, for example, make this editable using the associated feature layer. Or because you know it has this associated feature layer, we have some additional statistics, statistical information that we can use that helps with uh, definition queries and uh, symbology, for example. The other way to share is as a web scene layer. In this case, I can share by value or by reference. If I share by reference, all my, my data for the associated feature layer remain in my enterprise geodatabase, for example. And I can update this uh, using the normal um, editing capabilities that come for, uh, for feature services. Usually, uh, the uh, coordinate system um, will be for, if I share as a web scene layer, the coordinate system will be the coordinate system of the scene itself. Um, we are uh, recommending that if you make an editable scene layer, that you always stay in the coordinate system of, of your data itself. Meaning that if you are working in a projected coordinate system and you want to edit it, please don't edit this in a, in a global scene. Um, for the same reason that you, you don't edit any other data outside of, uh, or when you need to uh, project on the fly. And the last way of uh, creating a scene layer is really by creating an SLPK. You have multiple um, scene layer tools you can use. We have uh, done in 2.3 that we actually cut them into the individual scene layer types. And you can find them all in this toolbox, together also with a validation tool. So let's say you get an SLPK from a third party vendor. You can actually ask uh, if there are any problems, you can actually validate it. And please you know, let us know if there are any problems. Um, you, you can uh, have a report and, and send it to us. Um, the main reason why we, uh, we actually decided to have it in multiple tools is that we, of course, uh, plan in the future, like we did the last release with building scene layers, to have more and more scene layer types that you can share across the platform. And we want to make sure that we can um, really provide the capabilities uh, individually for each and every of the scene layer types. Now that we talked about the authoring and the publishing, now I want to get into uh, the consumption of uh, scene layers. Um, we are here mainly talking about uh, ArcGIS Pro, but the same capabilities um, are available when it comes to visualiz visualization for, um, for scene viewer, for example. The point cloud scene layer allows me to uh, really show billions of points uh, consuming in Pro runtime or in JavaScript API. It is optimized for scene layers with dense interior and exterior point clouds. And I can, for example, change the appearance, like I can change the symbology, I can change the filter on my point cloud. Uh, I have a little video here from the interior of uh, the user conference uh, island area. So I will just uh, start this now. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going inside of this uh, uh, island area and I'm turning on the uh, point cloud. 
And uh, that was provided by uh, the company Trimble. Um, they went through the island uh, area while there were actually still uh, people, so all the, uh, the blue on the ground is actually really uh, people walking there right now. And as you can see, I can, I can navigate this uh, point cloud. I can really see inside of this island area. Um, I can also look at this from above. So I have another bookmark where I can see the, um, the ceiling. And when I now you know, go through the point cloud and look up, I can really see the rafters and um, see a lot of details of this particular point cloud. This is just one example how you can use this for uh, interior point clouds, but of course also for uh, airborne uh, LiDAR as well. Another type that we have is integrated mesh scene layers. It's a continuous mesh captured all 3D aspects in one layer. Uh, currently, we uh, support the visualization of this layer. We know and we got a lot of requests for additional capabilities, and we're in the process of the design to actually really bring these new capabilities to you. I'm sure, I don't know who of you actually went to some talks about BIM and uh, uh, BIM integration in uh, ArcGIS. It's a very important story for us. And uh, our way or our contribution to this is the building scene layer. Already in Pro 2.2, you could actually use Revit as a data source and create a building layer, and that would only be an ArcGIS Pro. With 2.3, you can create a building scene layer. And that was really one of the first things that we saw on the beta forum when we uh, brought out two, uh, this uh, layer type in 2.2, when can I share this across the platform? And what really comes with this in addition is that I can um, toggle uh, category layers on, on and off very easily. I can define filters to only see assets that I'm interested in. Uh, it is the it's organized the same way as a building layer, so I have my uh, discipline layers like um, architectural, piping, structural, and so forth. I have my category layers like walls and windows, and they are all organized the same way as uh, you already know from a building layer. Uh, also here I made a little uh, video. This is a fictional uh, building that we are using uh, internally. It's very hard to find data that you can share publicly uh, when it comes to uh, building information. So I'm sure that your data is much more complex than uh, the example I have here. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm actually uh, creating a filter. So I'm, I'm giving it a title. Uh, it's the second floor and I just want to see all the assets on that second floor. Here I'm setting up a building block uh, that is solid, and I'm choosing the uh, filter type and the value to be second floor. And now I see everything across my whole layer for the second floor. I'm now also adding the walls uh, from the fa family um, type, and here I actually have to do a search. So I'm turning on the walls as well, and now I can see uh, my second floor really in context of uh, my uh, building because I have also the outer walls shown. Um, in this example, of course, I kind of see where the second floor is, but if you have a really complex building, it's hard to, to figure out where a floor, for example, really is. Another thing that we have is that the filter blocks are actually um, have priority. So now I have moved the walls uh, the, the wireframe above the, the solid one, and now even the inner walls are in wireframe. So why did we do this? Because it's very important that you, know, you can build very complex queries for your data. And instead of you know, letting you set a category layer for each and every, um, uh, for each and every of these category layers, we just want to have one experience for the whole building. Uh, I know that uh, the JavaScript API also has implemented this now, uh, and you can share this kind of uh, filter across the platform. Um, the other thing that you saw here is now you can also category layers, you can toggle them on and off very quickly. So we really wanted to have this smooth uh, uh, user experience for any building information that you might want to share.
Another type of the feature-based scene layer types are point scene layers. So uh, point scene layers are automatically thinned. You can have millions and millions of uh, point features within a point scene layer. You can consume them in all clients, uh, including runtime with update five. And of course, you can make changes to the symbology as well as you can have an associated feature layer. Much more commonly used uh, are 3D object scene layers. Uh, as I said, you create them from multi-patch feature classes, for example, and you can visualize, for example, millions of uh, outer shells of buildings. That is the, the most uh, common use case that we have seen, but of course it could be any other 3D object that you can, you can think of. Also in this case, I can create a 3D object scene layer with an associated feature layer that would allow me to maintain this kind of data. They are supported in all clients as well, and I can you know, change the appearance, I can uh, hide specific features, and I can uh, maintain them. What I have here is a, is a little example of uh, the city of Lyon, and I was uh, uh, adding to this data uh, noise levels within the city. So what I'm doing here is really just, I have an existing scene layer, <coughs> and I'm changing the symbology to be of a graduated color. And then I can, as you see, uh, when I uh, zoom around, it's, it's very responsive. So if I would try to do this with a multi-patch feature classes, it would definitely take a little bit more time. Um, here is a specific color scheme. I'm changing this here to be more yellow and red. And if I do so, you can see that in uh, particular in areas that are around the uh, the train uh, uh, stations or uh, really busy roads, you can see that there is much more noise levels. And also here, you know, I can, I can navigate this, this easily because uh, it's coming from a 3D object scene layer. The last area that we are uh, working on is the maintenance of uh, scene layers. And there we are really focusing on feature-based scene layers. So what I can do is uh, I can share a scene layer with an associated feature layer. Uh, I can do this by value or by reference. Um, and when I do so, I can actually enable the editing on the associated feature layer. If I have done so, then I can work with this uh, 3D object or point scene layer the same way I work with a feature service. Um, it is currently supported as an editing client, ArcGIS Pro. So for example, if I am a user who has editing rights, I can load the scene layer and I can make updates on the geometry as well as on the attributes. Um, you can use them within a GP workflow. And what I'm doing is uh, I make the changes to these features in the associated feature layer. Me, as an editing user, I immediately see these changes. Any other user who, for example, uh, consumes the same layer on the scene viewer would still see the cached version within the scene layer itself. After I've done my edits, I can just uh, rebuild uh, the scene layer and it's now available for all of my users. Um, I'm always joking that this is the hardest demo to give because there's nothing to see, and I still have to you know, make it visible for people. But that was really the main, um, uh, the main goal we had. We never wanted to interrupt anybody's workflow. So if you know how to uh, edit a multi-patch feature class, you know how to edit a, a 3D object scene layer. And with this overview, I uh, hand over to, uh, to Jill to give you more insights of the i spec, the tooling we have in addition, and uh, our current uh, plans for the Pro uh, 2.4 SDK. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> so now we get to talk about i3s. And I3S stands for Indexed 3D Scene Layer. Um, and this is the data source for scene layers. Um, and we've made a lot of updates recently to the specification for this. Um, and as Yvonne and I mentioned, we're both on the scene layers team. So we have now um, more officially taken on the spec as our project. So we would love to get um, your feedback on this. Has anybody looked at the I3S spec before? Anyone in this room? The right two? Awesome. 
So I3S, um, we'll start at the base level. Um, so I3S is an OGC community standard. Um, OGC stands for the Open Geospatial Consortium, and they're a voluntary um, consensus and standards organization. And I3S is a specification for streaming and distributing geospatial 3D content. And the open community standard of that means um, the community standard is a process for approving widely adopted specs and formats. And getting this done was a team effort by Esri, our partners, customers, and other interested industry parties. And right now, I3S is being used by Vriken, Nearmap, Pix4D, Bentley and Context Capture, Melon, and we are currently working with SAFE and Autodesk to integrate I3S into their pipelines. So on to the spec itself. Um, we've completely overhauled it, so if you have looked at it before, um, please take a look again. Um, we've completely rewritten the readmes, the format documents, and other details to make the spec more intuitive and readable in general. Um, and one of the biggest changes we made is it's now also organized by profile type. So if you're only interested in 3D object scene layers or if you're only interested in point clouds, now um, you can see all the documentation um, in one place organized by profile type. And um, in the most recent release, which was actually last Friday, um, we added official documentation for point cloud scene layers as well as the building scene layer. Um, and we will be providing a scene layer upgrading tool to help you transition to new versions of spec in the future. So let's actually go to the link on GitHub. Doesn't look like it gave it to you. Um. And, all right, looks like I have to pause the presentation. All right, so this is the, um, the I3S spec. So you can find this by um, on the Esri public GitHub. Um, you can also just Google Esri I3S spec. That will also bring you to the um, OGC documentation. Um, so you can see our most recent update was six days ago. So this is really like uh, brand new stuff. Um, here's an example of a scene layer. Avon talked extensively about that um, in the beginning of this talk. So we have details on that. And here we have the list of all of the supported scene layer types. And then right here, we have the overview um, for the format in general. So if you're not sure which scene layer type you want to look at, you can look at the overall format. We have more details about um, how I3S sort of became to be. We added a what's new section. So if you're already familiar with um, I3S, you can just look at this part to see what's new. Um, we have information about where you can use it um, with some of our partners, as well as across the um, Esri platforms. So information about publishing and consuming and what versions of that. Um, for uh, we focus, our, We're focusing on Pro in this presentation, but um, scene layers can also be consumed in the JavaScript API, ArcGIS Earth, City Engine. So let's take a look at one of the profile types. So let's look at the building scene layer. So this is how we have decided to organize um, the different profiles. So we have a description at the top, we have a photo, um, and then we have links here to the most relevant um, internal documentation if for creating a building scene layer. We have an overview example of what your spec should look like, and then we also have um, an overview of the API calls. So if we dive into the layer description, um, it's an even more detailed look, and this layer description is specific to the building scene layer, so Point Cloud has its own description um, and so on. Another example, we have an example of the service, a few more details. We also have a related section um, with links to the internal spec. We have the properties that you would expect to have um, in, the, uh, in the layer. The properties in bold are required, but this lists all of them. It lists the types. It has descriptions, it has even more links. And then we also have working examples. Um, so this is a building scene layer um, 
And you should be able to copy and paste this. You can see that. Um, and we also have an example of a building scene layer without an overview. So if I go back to the main readme, um, if I wasn't sure I wanted to look at building scene layers, I could look at the format. Um, this document, we also put a lot of time in um, reorganization and rewording. We now have a table of contents with links. Um, so if we link to the coordinate system, we have external links. We have a description of coordinate systems um, and how they work within I3S. Um, and then at the end, even more links to related things. So this should really help you guys out. If we look at the spatial reference, once again, we have the same, the similar pattern of description, related links, and properties, and a working example. All right, so back to our slides. Oh, um, is everyone here familiar with GitHub somewhat? OK. Um, so we would love to get feedback on the spec. Um, anything you'd like to see, or if anything could be more clear, if you want even more examples or links. Um, we, this is in GitHub, so please submit a Git issue, um, and we will be keeping an eye on all of that. So next is on to the tooling. So we decided to create this tool because um, this will help keep your data up to the most recent version of the spec, and it will also help you validate your I3S output schema. Um, so this will, uh, for now, this will just validate the JSON schema you're outputting with your I3S content. If you need a deeper validation, there is a tool inside of ArcGIS Pro called Validate Scene Layer Package, and that um, will give you even more information. Um, but this tool is special because it won't have any dependencies on ArcGIS or Arc objects, so it'll be available for free on the Esri GitHub. And we're planning to release this in conjunction with the next version of the spec, and we're targeting uh, June 2019, so that's just before you see, along with the uh, Pro 2.4 release. And the first release of this tool will include these options for 3D objects and integrated mesh. And now for the scene layer, ArcGIS Pro SDK. Um, so the Pro SDK in general um, allows you to create custom add-ins and automate some of your workflows. And in the current version of the SDK, scene layers have somewhat limited capabilities. So in the 2.4 Pro release, um, it will expose even more parts of the scene layers to be used in the SDK system. And we did this because we want um, the Pro SDK to be more accessible to you, and we want you to be able to use scene layers in your custom workflows. So here's just a quick overview of the structure. So the scene layer um, pretty obviously inherits from the layer. So anything you've used before um, with the general layer type, all the functionality and features you can also do with the scene layer. Um, and then we have all of the specific disciplines of the scene layer um, come from the scene layer group. So we have the building discipline scene layer, um, point cloud, integrated mesh, as well as the feature scene layers. Um, so the point scene layer and the 3D object scene layer. Um, and this will all be described in detail in the SDK documentation. So now for an example. So here's a scene layer with some of the buildings in downtown San Francisco. And let's say I've shared this scene with one of my customers, but I only want them to really pay attention to the buildings that have ports. So instead of creating a separate scene layer with just these buildings, I can apply a definition query and then select the buildings um, that I want the customers to focus on. And this might seem like a really simple workflow, um, especially to people who are familiar with ArcGIS, but um, a lot of customers are not comfortable writing definition queries or even opening the properties window. So this is a really easy way, if you're comfortable creating um, add-ins and using the SDK, that you can <clears throat> encourage them to do that and make sure you guys are on the same page and uh, looking at the same thing. So here are the buildings we want to look at. So if you've done other SDK work before, this should look pretty familiar. First, we want to select our layer by name, and then we set the type to be a feature scene layer. And next, we set the definition query using SQL. And I use object ID to um, create this definition query, but any valid definition query will work. Um, 
And I can use scene layers with or without an associated feature layer. Not all scene layers have them. Um, we're using it for this example, but it's not required. Um, and then finally, I use the same SQL string to um, create the parameters for the selection statement. Now we can see our add in an action. Um, and all of this can be done in Pro 2.4. Um, and it's a great way to look at and simplify um, complex data sets. Um, and you can see it's pretty interactive, it's pretty quick. So here's a little bit more um, complex of an example. So we want to update the building name um, to include today's date and time. And um, this could be used to update any editable attribute um, in a service layer, not just the title. Um, but this example demonstrates how we can use the SDK or the other parts of the SDK with scene layers. So the first thing we do is we create a query filter like we did in the previous example. And in order to update the building name, we need to access the functions within the editing SDK. Um, which in this case, we will be using Inspector. And more documentation about Inspector is in the SDK um, in the editing section. And now we can pick our new name, the thing we actually want to update. So I'm going to change the name to Port Building Verified and then use um, a string of the current date and time. And since this will be updating a feature layer, we'll instantly be able to see the results on ArcGIS Online uh, as well as in Pro. Um, however, if I was making any geometry changes, so if I was adding a building, deleting a building, um, or anything along those lines, I would need to rebuild the cache. Um, but rebuilding the cache can be scripted on the server side. So before I run the video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps because it goes a little bit quickly. So uh, right now we're looking at the scene service um, in ArcGIS Online, and we'll see the pop-up data. Then we have the same um, scene layer opened in Pro. We'll look at the pop-up and see that it's the same details. Then we'll run our add-in, and then we'll verify that the data has changed both in Pro and um, in ArcGIS Online. And once again, uh, we'll be able to see this immediately because it's on the associated feature layer and not geometry changes. So here's ArcGIS Online. We can see that the name is San Fran, a ridge, and then some numbers. And then we have the same uh, scene layer in Pro. The same details in our pop-up here. Then we go to our add-in. Run the add-in. And now we can see that the name of the building has been updated and also includes the date and time of when I created uh, this video. So now we go back to, uh, we refresh in ArcGIS Online, <clears throat> reorient ourselves and make sure we are looking at the same building we were looking at previously. And we can see that the changes have propagated. And right now, this editing workflow um, will only work in ArcGIS Pro, but um, we are working with the online team to make these become available to you. We're already testing it, and to my knowledge, it should be available by UC. So what's next? Everything we've shown you today um, is what we're currently working on. Um, the next version of the i3s spec is 1.7, and as I mentioned previously, we'd love to get your input. The more input we have, the more um, we can work to incorporate. And the, uh, the release um, for the spec will also align with the uh, just general, our, as, excuse me, the just general um, as releases, so that's usually about twice a year. Um, and the tooling will also be in with that next spec release. Um, and this is just a first step for our tooling. Um, we eventually hope to develop a much broader um, I3S, um, maybe even SDK, where you can validate and upgrade and identify and um, learn all about the 3D data that you currently have. And then for the um, Scene Layers Pro SDK, uh, both of the examples I showed today were um, created using Pro 2.4. 
Um, and if you're a member of the beta program, you can already try this out um, starting right now. And you can use the beta program feedback channels uh, to provide feedback about scene layers in the Pro SDK as well as the SDK in general. And with that, I will open it to questions. In the back. So in the example that you just had where you edited the data layer, so is that scene layer package just hosted in ArcGIS Online? That's where you're getting at it from ArcGIS Pro then? Um, maybe I can, I can clarify that. You need to have a scene layer with an associated feature layer. You create that by publishing it by value or by reference. And uh, currently it works for enterprise. Uh, so it already, uh, we already worked on that for 10.6.1. And now in 10.7 we also have a partial update. Um, the, um, the workflow to uh, edit uh, in ArcGIS Online um, that will be the, this is the one that we are currently working on so that you can publish a, a scene layer with an associated feature layer to ArcGIS Online and you can edit it the same way in Pro as a client. And we are testing it, so I, I, <laughs> I keep my fingers crossed. It's happening. Yeah, anything else? Can I ask one? I'll ask one for him. Okay. I'm trying to bring him over. <laughs> um, um, how about some simple tools for like clipping and things like that? Is seeing seeing that coming in the future? Because that's something I'm surprised that doesn't exist right now. Uh, we are aware of this uh, this need. Um, we are we are not planning this in the next release, but it's not as it's not far out in the future. But please don't, uh, please don't press me too hard to say which release because that would be hard for me to, to say.